Hey, Tim here again at City Cigar Garage. I want to talk to you a little bit about X's in cars. Not ex-wives, X's in cars. Help hold up main hoop, door bar X's, stuff like that. One of the things I've noticed in, in other builders, like first time builders, is getting the X's straight in the car. So they look good on two planes. So I'll show you a little bit about what I'm talking about and try to explain it. I'm not gonna take these back out, they're tacked in place, but I can give you a good enough idea on how to do this to make them look right, so. This is the Henry J. We've got the, as you can see, we got the X in here. If you look at it from the back, it looks straight from the back. And in this plane here, it's the same on this plane. That's what you're looking for. Door bars are the same way. Talk a little bit about them too. Try to not shake you up too much and get all this going, but this car is pretty much all, all the main tubing and stuff's in it and everything else. And like I say, while I was doing this, I wanted to talk about axes and how I do them. So I'll share that real quick. Hopefully you'll understand. First thing I do is determine on where I want it to hit. This is right behind the halo bar in this car. Here, the whole purpose of the X in the back is to help hold the roll cage up and then put a little bit more diagonal support in here. And it's like I said before, triangles are stronger than rectangles. So, you've got two triangles butted against each other in theory here. You determine a distance where you want them to hit. I wanted them to hit on that flat right there on the frame rail. So I measured back from like the main hoop support there. The same on both sides, cleaned all that up and got me a reference mark there with a square so I knew where that tube would hit in the end. I mean, and it's the same on both sides as you can see. They're laying in about the same location. And what I'm gonna try to do now is show you how I do this. Try to make it sort of simple. First thing I do, I take two magnets and a piece of string. And I pull the string from where I want it to hit on the top to where I want it to hit on the bottom. Just sort of stick it up here on a magnet. Now if you notice this, I've got it on this line right here, and I put it up here. What you're trying to do is determine the plane of this tube on one side so you can correctly measure the cope. So you sort of roll her up where you got her on that line there so the string lines up there. And then it gives you approximately the same thing down there, if you can see that pulls that line through there so that you can measure your angles. And what I do, I've got two ways to do this. I've got a just a regular general um, angle finder here. And I also have a digital one I use too. This, is, this one can be confusing for some of my help because it reads in a 360 degree circle. So what I do at this point as I try to determine this angle here. And on this one here, I believe it was like five degrees or 85 degrees. If you can see this, I try to line the stem up with the string and determine where it finishes off right there. Okay, once I've got that done, then I take a piece of tubing a small piece of tubing scrap and I will cope that angle in it so that I know that it will fit up here where I want it okay once I know that fits I'll measure 
If you'll notice, it's a little long. I add like three eighths here, put in, and measure down to that corner down there, add about a half inch, and I'll put this cope in it first. Then what I do, on this side, it's sort of tough to figure this coat, but if you look at it, what you're doing is you're trying to figure out, I'm going to hold my scrap down here, where the short point of the cope is on the string. And what I do, if you look in there, you can see where it touches. I'll mark that with a marker, and that will be my short point of the cope. Then what I do is I measure up from the frame rail to see how much of a gap I have there from the frame rail to the edge of the tube and then I will transfer that measurement to the back side of this tube where I've marked it and try to make a rough cut there and I just do this in my bandsaw you know trim that off and, and honestly I try to leave them a little long so I can figure out you know if I got a sand or trim because it'll always need a little bit of work and I'll either use a marker or my Silver Street pencil to draw a line around it and sand and fit to get that one piece in place, okay? That's how I do that first one. And the first one's fairly easy. One thing I want to show you too, on the inside of these, when you're checking your little cope, you can see up here that this one touches in that weld a little bit right there. So you have to sand a little bit of that off to make it fit. Okay. And I'm going to set you down. I'm going to move my string. Because the next part, the next part here, we have to um, figure out the two short sides. Okay, did the same thing on the top up there as I did on the other side. I did the same thing down here. Got it right on my line so that it gives us that plane of that tube. So then if you look right here, you can see a little silver mark there. I used my silver streak pencil to make a mark approximately where that plane was. Okay, and I also at that point used my my angle finder to measure this angle here like this okay I got sorry about that I got I got that angle measured so I knew how to cope that so what I did then is measured that tube added a little bit of length coped that to fit in there and I usually clamp that in with a couple spring clamps I'll show you that like when I'm trying to hold this stuff in place Got you twisted around there. Put a spring clamp on like that, and that'll hold the tube up. So I'm, you know, only worried about one end at a time. Okay, when I get that done, then I proceed to fit the bottom part. Same cope, same cope angle right there. And then I fit the bottom of that the same way I did over here. Get it all fit together good. Okay where I know everything will slide around where I want it and looks good on my line and then I take a piece I'm going to set you down to do this one again try to show you this I got a piece of angle iron that I use it's got a notch in it been using this piece here probably for 40 years and this is how I use it First thing you do, clamp it to the clamp it to this tube, just like that. Then you put a clamp here, 
and a clamp here. Then you slide, you can slide this one around a little bit to get it so this is perfectly straight. And that's how you get an X straight in a car, by using a piece of angle iron just like that. It's that simple. A little bit of string, piece of angle iron, and you can get a straight X every time. I'll come around the side a little bit and show you that. It's a similar deal here in the door bars, but you're using different size tubing. You know, you get your, you get your door bar in like this. You know where it's got to go up there. That's determined by your seating position in the car. Of course, we don't have the seats in here, but I know where they went. And what I do down here in the bottom, you can see that a little bit. I leave it up just a little bit. It just makes it easier to do all the tin work in the floors, you know, sheet metal work and all that stuff. Then it's easier to weld that way, too. You're not trying to, you know, put your tungsten way out to weld or, you know, if you're using a MIG welder making a porous wall than that joint so then on the other part of the X I do the same thing in the back I keep it up a half inch and I actually just use two quarter inch pieces of aluminum and lay down on there and clamp them with a spring clamp to hold that distance then I measure up you can see my little black mark I measure up an inch and a quarter there figure out where I want it to hit here I've sanded my mark off there but I figure out where I want it to hit there, trying to keep it out of all that other weld joint. And honestly, if you keep it a tiny bit low like this, it makes it a little easier to get in the car. And then I proceed, I proceed to do the same process. I'll pull a string line through there, measure my cope angles, cope everything to fit. I cope, I cope these ends first. Cope there, and I cope there first. Then I save this for last. It's a little bit longer cope, but you're not moving your your um, tubing notch your back and forth on angles to change it. You just you know set it at this one angle and you can knock a little bit off at a time until you get it where you want it. I'm gonna pull my spring clamp off. I'll show you this a little closer so you can see it how that works. But it's pretty simple. Similar on the similar on the door. I'll um. Try to pull this off of here and yeah I'm gonna drop it on the floor so I'm gonna set you down and then on this side of the car you basically do the same thing it won't being that you're putting the inch and a quarter in the inch and five eighths you sort of got to clamp it into the clamp it to the inch and five eighths and just clamp it straight down on this, but that's how that works. You know, it's that simple. And you do that on both sides, and then when you look through the car, you can see that the bars are parallel with each other. You know, it's it works out so they you can sight across the tops of the bars and they look the same. They don't look crooked in the car. I mean some people never notice that but as a chassis builder I do and you can see in the floor too I've got one inch tubing in the middle there for triangulation to help support it if I'm building a 750 cert it would run down to the bottom of that loop I would make more of an X but this is an 850 car so um, then I've got the triangulation in the outsides the reason why I did it that way is to add some support to that rocker bar. I mean, not that the cross member wouldn't do it, but like I say, triangles are stronger than rectangles, so we're trying to get a little bit of strength in this. Being it's a manual transmission car, you know, you want to try to get everything as strong as possible. I've got the, you can see the roof diagonal in there now. I got that in and my hoop gussets or halo bar gussets and main hoop gusset stuff like that like I say all the tubing's done in this thing basically finish walled it and then I've got another one probably can see a little bit of that there's the frame rails for another one laying on the floor an identical car so when I get this walled up I'm gonna pull it off the jig and I'm gonna build a second chassis right away so it's fresh in my mind how I did this so 
I just thought I'd share a little bit of this with you. Show you the Falcon. We'll get the jig going here. We've started putting some temporary bracing in there to get the frame rails located and you can see uh, my rear end jig back there. The housing jig sort of st stuck in it. That's what we got going on. I just thought I'd show you quick what we're doing with all this stuff. Thanks for watching.